Black Adam and Captain America team up for a Christmas caper the likes you've never seen before and maybe don't ever want to see again. It's called Red One. But is it Red Fun? Well, that's a question I pose to you right now, and I'm going to answer it in just a second. Let's go. Christopher Nolan, you son of a bitch, you have some competition. In the form of a Christmas film that will surely rival that of an Oppenheimer. At least Dwayne The Rock Johnson seems to think so. Now, some of you may look at a trailer for a movie like Red One and think to yourself, wow, this looks like total crap. Well, you need to get the candy cane out of your ass and have a little bit of fun in life. Subscribe for candy cane ass play. We're a little bit spicy in this episode right out of the gates, but I could say the same thing for Red One. A movie that appears to be for families, kids, but also trying to navigate that fine line where you can bring in fans of the Avengers. This is a two hour PG-13 action packed extravaganza featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson as an ELF member. In fact, he's the head of the ELF, which is a department that protects Santa Claus. That's right, Santa Claus is a real person here. And in real life, of course, and in real life, kids, he's played by J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons, as we know, has been hitting the gym for a while now. He got all buff and in shape for his critical role in the DCU Batman v Superman and Justice League, where he can be seen for a grand total of 35 seconds. Thankfully, Simmons has a bit more screen time in this movie as Santa Claus. What we have here, friends, is a simple premise. Calum Drift, played by Johnson, is just one day away from retirement. We've never heard this before. After putting in hundreds of years of service, he feels like people are garbage and he can't see that childlike wonder in the adults anymore. Old Saint Nick begs to diff. Diff, short for differ. But he respects Calum, so he's going to let him go on his merry way after they pull this one final job. Which is, of course, to deliver presents to all the little kids all across the globe. Which wouldn't be a problem, because they've done it so many times. Except for the fact that Kris Kringle is kidnapped! And now it's up to Drift to save the sleigh. I mean, day. Unfortunately, it means teaming up with a garbage person who's on the naughty list. He's a class 4 naughty offender. Their words, not mine. Enter Chris Evans as Jake O'Malley, surely a role that's going to wind him up right at the top of the Razzie list this year, because holy crap, Chris, what were you doing with this accent? Chris is playing like three different characters here, all with different wild accents. In some scenes, he's normal sounding. At other times, he's a straight mobster villain talking to his kid. Yo, you tell that kid what's up. Forget about it. If that kid thinks he's gonna mess with our family, he's got another thing coming, mister. How you doing? ba ba -booey. hey, I'm walking here. I wish I was being dramatic, but this is legitimately how he plays it at some points. Jack doesn't believe in Christmas, uh, because he's an adult. But that's all about to change, when Calum Tokyo drifts right into his world and brings him back into another one. One full of headless horsemen, Krampus, Bigfoot, all the things you heard about growing up that you thought were debunked or just fairy tales. No, 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 no. It's all real. It's all true. All of it. And we know this because the film introduces an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.-esque department that looks over this stuff, keeps everything in check. Lucy Liu heads this division. I forgot the name. It doesn't matter. We're never going to see him again because this movie's probably going to bomb at the box office because it costs over $200 million to make. Where did that money go? Was it to finally invest into some porta potties so Dwayne The Rock Johnson doesn't have to keep using bottles he finds around set? Anybody's guess. We'll get to the visuals in a second, but we're not done with this plot. And I will have a spoiler video that's going to go much more in depth to the point that I can remember anything. So definitely stick around if you want to hear that. It's going to be a good time. Uh, but Lucy Liu runs this division. We're going to get teases and glimpse of things to come and potential spin-off films down the road that, again, we're not going to get because this movie's going to bomb, much like Black Adam did. I don't know why Dwayne Johnson... I, I don't know why his movies have these insane budgets. Uh, it's clear that people are kind of over it. But anyway, Jack's going to team up with Calum, and they're going to travel to different locations, fight a bunch of CG snowmen on a beach full of only attractive women, like stupidly attractive. They, they look like they were rendered with AI. I don't know what's happening on that beach, but uh, 
I have a few beaches by my house, and I can attest that uh, what we saw in that film, eh, not really mirroring real life very well. I want to go to there, is what I'm saying. So the rest of the movie is going to be these two numbskulls trying to figure out who captured Claus, why the person did it, and what they can do to get him back. All right, straightforward enough. I already said this movie's two hours. It needed to be shorter. Uh, it overstays its welcome by a lot. Now, not the worst movie I've seen this year. In fact, I wouldn't say it's outright awful. It's a watchable movie. It's just very bizarre what they're trying to do tonally because there isn't much action and it doesn't start until about 45 minutes in. Those action scenes, not great. Uh, some of them are downright stupid, especially when Caleb's number one ability being utilized is shrinking down to mini-me size and then popping back up. He Ant-Man's way too much in this movie. And as for Jack, I don't even know why he's along for this ride. He should be sitting in the sleigh, not coming out to play with these guys. He brings nothing to the table. He's a regular human fighting giant monster snowmen, fighting literal demons. What is Jack O'Malley gonna do? The tone is ultimately the major problem and that has to do with Dwayne The Rock Johnson who is taking this so very seriously. This is one of his best serious dramatic roles in a film to date and it's about saving Kris Kringle. Had this film taken a Zoolander approach where, you know, the characters still very much are playing serious but they're doing it in a comedic way, I think it would have nailed it. But these guys are like straight manning the whole film while saying some of the most absurd things to ever come out of a human's mouth. I also mentioned it's PG-13. There's a good amount of swearing in this movie. Uh, I, I know most kids are desensitized by that at this point, but if you're thinking of taking the fam to this, maybe hold off for Moana. Probably gonna be a safer bet. Also has Dwayne The Rock Johnson in it. It's hard to miss him. Even though the movie is serious, there are comedic moments. There is humor sprinkled throughout. Most of it misses though. It's just not very funny. There are some fun ideas though. There is some creativity here that could have worked had again, the tone been more consistent with the script. Let's talk about the visuals though. I mentioned this thing has over a $200 million budget. It looks so bad. There's a lot of CG, but it's really poorly lit. So many of these nighttime shots, it's hard to even see what's going on, especially in the final act. I was squinting and I know I'm no, I know I'm no spring chicken, but still it's unacceptable that I'm like really struggling in a massive theater screen to see what the hell is going on. And when you think family Christmas movies, typically you have more colorful effects going on. But the world, the North Pole that they present is, is dingy. It's like the Super Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. It's, it's just not a place I want to visit anytime soon. Now, as for a recommendation, I'm going to throw one at you. So, somewhat in the same ballpark. It's called The Guardians. It bombed when it hit theaters. The premise is very familiar. You follow the Easter Bunny, Santa, the Sandman's in there, and Jack Frost. There's some stakes here. There's a lot of drama. But I think because it's an animated film, it's got very pretty graphics, it's colorful, it's lively, the humor lands better. That's just a much easier, more fun watch than this. Also, being a half hour shorter goes a long way. Listen, I do appreciate an original story. Red One is, for all intents and purposes, that. Even if it is trying to build up its own kind of MCU down the road, which it won't be able to do again because I don't think this is going to make money. Next weekend is Wicked already. The weekend after that, we have Moana 2. These movies are going to steamroll Red One. So it is a bummer when big, expensive original films don't stick the landing, which is what encourages Disney and DreamWorks and other companies to start churning out more and more sequels and live action remakes. But the sad reality is that's what happened with Red One. A premise that is fun and very silly, but poorly executed. Okay, let me know your thoughts on this movie. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews every week. I'm gonna cover all these other movies I talked about on the channel. I'd appreciate it if you stuck around to hear my thoughts. If you love my channel, you've been following for a while. Please think about joining Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Over 300 exclusive videos and counting every single month. There's different tiers and it's the number one way to show your support for the channel. All right, hopefully I'll see you next time for the spoiler video. Take care.